Welcome back. Continuing in the local news, a recent report, Caribbean countries were warned to take note that social security schemes in the region may face increasing financial pressure in years to come. When IKTV first reported this, it was in 2016. This stark reality is noted in an International Monetary Fund IMF work paper titled National Insurance Scheme Reforms in the Caribbean. According to the report, governments are being advised to pay close attention to their schemes, which are projected to run significant deficits with a possible depletion of assets over the coming decades. The report highlights a number of factors including unfavorable, unfavorable demographic trends, slow economic growth, rising employment, widening fiscal deficits and increasing public debt levels since the onset of the 2008 global financial crisis. The report adds that the economic downturn has impacted the schemes as decline in growth rates coupled with significant increases in unemployment rates which have contributed to lower contributions to the schemes. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez in delivering the keynote address on Thursday the 5th of January 2017 at uh, the ceremony held at the NIS conference room to mark the 30th anniversary of the Social Security Institution said that there is need for more self-employed persons such as vendors, hairdressers, taxi drivers, lawyers, doctors and construction workers to register with the NIS. The Prime Minister explained that self-employed persons need to make contributions to the NIS in order to secure their benefits. Meanwhile, Meneva Glasgow, Deputy Executive Director of the NIS, says that to be classified as self-employed by the NIS, a person must be a national or resident of St. Vincent and the Grenadines between the ages of 16 and currently pensionable at age 61 who is gainfully occupied in his or her own business and not subject to direct control by another person or institution. In a stunning turn of events, a Green Hill man is accusing police officers attached to the Rapid Response Unit, the RRU, of unlawfully removing him from Kingstone and leaving his six-year-old son standing on the road unsupervised. Alvin Antrobus of Green Hill reported in the newspapers that on Christmas Eve 2016, he was walking in Pauls Avenue in the area of the Games Bookstore around 7.30 p.m. when he saw the RRU contingent known locally as the Black Squad approaching on a pickup truck. At that point, he noted that the officers took him without any questioning and left his son unsupervised. IKTV will continue to look into the matter. In other news, the Canawan Beach As Access Saga continues with activist Terry Bino once again playing the lead role. Last Friday, Bino and another Canawan resident, Andrew Foyle, appeared in the Kingston Magistrate Court where they pleaded not guilty to entering the property of the Canawan Resort Development with intent to annoy. Bino and Foyle said to have committed the offense on Thursday, January 5th. They were both on the mainland to answer the charges. Bino is also charged with violating a court order that says he must stay away from the land owned by the developers on Canawan. Both men are on EC $2,000 bail and will reappear in court sometime January 20th. Following the arrest of the two Canon activists last Thursday, the relationship between the developers and Canon residents has further deteriorated. According to Searchlight newspaper, last Thursday, January 5th, Canon activists Terry Bino and Andrew Foyle were arrested and transported to mainland St. Vincent and both were charged with criminal trespassing. Bino was additionally charged with disobeying a court order. On the Boom OMG talk show, host Dwight Bing Joseph asked the question, how can you be able to present proof 
to a person who is only on the way to the beach and accuse them of trespassing. Florence Davis of St. Vincent and the Grenadines is the newest centurion. Davis, who resides in the farming community of Evisham, celebrated her 100th birthday on January 3, 2017. According to news reports, Davis' mother was a farmer on the Evisham estate where she planted potatoes, arrowroot, cotton and ginger, among other crops. Florence Davis was reported to have loved reading and even in her old age she still has a good memory and a good sense of humor and loves having persons around her. IKTV's news team extends belated birthday greetings to Florence Davis and wishes her many more to come and also congratulations to her family on doing a well done job taking care of her. The Ministry of Agriculture recently launched the distribution of soil ameliorants at the Lacroix Pelletization Center in their quest to modernize the agricultural sector. Chief Agricultural Officer Mr. Ashley Kane said that the testing of soil ameliorants was not sustained. The results of the farmer's application of these soil ameliorants we hope would encourage farmers not only to use it now, but to ensure and to make the demands at whatever level ministry it has to be made for these soil ameliorants to be an integral part, an important part of what is available for the production of agriculture. So we have blue diatine to protect the banana bunch. What do we need to do to protect the capacity of our soil and the knowledge of our farmers to ensure that 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years down the road, agriculture remains a viable and a good source of livelihood for our people in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It is said that what gets measured gets done, and particularly for the extension staff, we would want to track how these fields which have been fertilized, how they perform compared to other fields that may not have had the same treatment and learn from it in ways that will allow us to have a stronger agricultural industry in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Minister of Agriculture, the Honorable Saboto Caesar, said that the shared development plans for 2017 are now out. Early in 2017, I am going to visit a lot of the work done under the BAM program. We are going to visit all the sheds which have been completed. We are also going to visit the, the greenhouse park, the palletization center in Landley Park, and uh, excellent work has been done so far on that center. I am also going to take the opportunity to go to the food science lab because that has been a great investment and will be a great investment towards our youth, the youth of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, Fisheries and Rural Transformation announced that as of two weeks ago, January 1st, 2017, all sea turtles and their eggs are protected in the waters and beaches of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The decision to impose a total ban on all sea turtles came in late 2016 in response to the increased global threat to sea turtles and to their status as vulnerable, endangered and critically endangered. The Ministry of Fisheries initiative to protect all sea turtles comes under the theme No Extension in My Generation. 
the Ministry of Fisheries will continue to work with and support fisher folk to assist former turtle fishers as they move away from turtle harvesting. The Ministry, together with the National Parks, Rivers and Beaches Authority, will pursue a National Sea Turtle Conservation Program, which entails turtle watching as a viable ecotourism opportunity in rural coastal communities. The windward communities of Connery, Byra, and Sandy Bay Big Sand have been identified for two turtle watch projects. In light of this, the Minister of Fisheries, Honorable Sabota Caesar, stated, Today is a great day for conservation in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as all our sea turtles are now protected. The Minister wishes to thank all stakeholders who partnered with the government to make this day of total protection for our turtles in St. Vincent and the Grenadines a reality. The Minister concluded that St. Vincent and the Grenadines is willing to support any effort regionally and internationally toward the protection of turtles. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez is scheduled to leave the state tomorrow at the head of five-member delegation to attend the seventh session of the Assembly of the International Renewable Energy Agency, IRENA. The assembly is set to take place in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates on January 14th and 15th, 2017. And finally, in the local news, the delegation includes the Prime Minister's wife, Eloise Gonzalez, the head of the energy unit, Ellsworth Dacon, Ken Morris, a senior official in the Ministry of Finance, and Isis Gonzalez, special advisor at the SVG UN mission in New York. The Assembly will bring together international policy makers at the highest level to discuss critical matters relating to renewable energy in terms of captivative investments and global cooperation. The Prime Minister and his delegation are scheduled to return to the state on January 17th. We will take another commercial break. When we come back, you will have your sports news with Latifa Noel. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 